welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Mitra and today in this video we're going to continue talking about the man to programmer is like woman to homemaker paper. And you may say, oh my god, paper, mathematics and everything. I know, I know. And that is why in this video we're going to not only read the paper, we're going to visualize it. And also have a guest. Welcome. And I'm going to pretend that it's not awkward at all to have myself as an algorithm. But before we get started, you know the drill. Smash that subscribe button for more videos every week on deep learning, machine learning, and even lifestyle. Without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so in the previous video, we talked about how computers couldn't understand the meaning of words and interact with us with the human language. So what scientists did was that they uh, created some algorithms such as word to vec that could help us come up with numbers that represented each word. So in this way, the computers could understand the meaning of each word that we're using. Yeah, she's talking about me. And I can talk about my inventor and everything else. Okay, darling, we talked about all these things in the previous video. But here, what we want to do is that get help from you to make some word embeddings. Uh, yeah, sure, I can do that. But you don't have any predefined label or number that I can learn from? No, we don't have such a thing. But sure, we have a lot of text from Google News, from history books. And so many other things that you may find helpful. You have to go through all of them and also find out the relationships between the words and try to come up with three digits that represent the most important aspects of each word. And you want only like three digits to represent every word? I mean, there can be a lot of different aspects for every and each word. Like cat is cute, so it has cuteness. Cat is a pet, so it's an animal. Uh, this cat is black, so it has different colors. I mean, there can be a million different features. Well, that's why we're making the word embeddings. It's an embedding that is an instance of a bigger outer space. All right. Also, you have the privilege to do all these cool things because you're an autoencoder. I'm a what? Okay, I'll tell you. Let us get into the definition. The word to vec algorithm that is used for generating word embeddings falls into a category of algorithms called autoencoders. Autoencoders are generally like compressors. They take in one representation of our data and then return another representation for the output. So if we give it this representation of this white fluffy cute dog, then it outputs another not very fluffy or white dog because it's been compressed and also we're somehow seeing the most important features of the first image. These algorithms mainly have three parts. In part one, our data or our input is encoded. So it's called encoder. Part two has the compressed data and is called the bottleneck. And also at last, the part three is the decoder that tries to output something that is very similar to the input. And it is because of all these features, these algorithms were traditionally used for compressing and also reducing the dimensionality of features of our input. So you can think of it as something like PCA, but they've evolved and also are being used in different fields like in image and natural language processing. So I'm unsupervised and can give you the most important aspects, right? Well, exactly. I think you're a great learner and get this gradient descent and you're good to go. Mm, well, okay, I guess. Oh, wait, where did you go? Where are you going? Two hours later. Okay, what do you have for me? Here you go with the embeddings you wanted. Uh, the three digits to present whether or not the word is an animal, how big it is, and also the gender. Actually, it's great, yeah. But you didn't include the degree of cuteness, did you? Um, no, you wanted only three digits for each word. There were more important features. Well, I think you did a pretty good job. But, you know, three doesn't really give us the most important aspects, right? So this time, let's go with 300. Okay, 
But at least sit and watch me run. What if there was a problem? Three days later. Okay, show me what you got. Here you go with the embedding suit on it. I think it's pretty good. Look, you added cuteness too. Well, I think you did a pretty good job here. Thank you uh, in the first place. But let's say that we want a little bit more accurate digits for each word. So let's add two more epochs and see what you can do. Wait till I give you a book. So that was how word to vec word embeddings were made. Almost. So with these embeddings at hand, they could do a lot of different cool things. But one of the most important and maybe most famous things that they could do was playing analogy games with computers. For example, they would say man to woman is like king to what? And the computer would answer queen. As humans, we know that this is the right answer because the relationship between man and woman is like the relationship between king and queen. So they continued asking these questions. For example, they would say Tokyo to Japan is like New Delhi to what? And the computer would answer uh, India. And they would, you know, totally get crazy and say this is really bad shit. But the way computers could answer these questions is pretty easy. So we said that word embeddings are actually vectors in space. So let's say that we have three digits to represent each word. And here, what you're seeing on screen is actually the word to vec embeddings that I lowered their dimension to three in order to visualize them better and more easily. But let's stop this animation and just go into a little bit more detail. When we ask the algorithm man to woman is as what to girl, we're actually asking the algorithm to find the difference between the vectors of the first pair and then see what vector has this difference with the word vector of girl. So when we work out the math, you can see that when we add the difference of the first pair to the vector of girl, we'll get a vector very close to what we calculate. So our algorithm would search between all the word vectors and find the one that has the closest values to what we calculated here. And as you can see, by searching between all the words, it will output the word boy. So everything was so perfect and impressive, but where was the problem? Well, after a little bit of exploration, scientists found out that the names of some special careers were closer to the vector of one specific gender. For example, the word uh, receptionist or nurse was closer to she, the vector of the word she, than to the vector of the word he. This was also true for names of careers like architect, magician, captain, that were closer to the vector of the word he than to she. And that was why when scientists asked the algorithm uh, man to computer programmer is like woman to what, the computer answered like our great grandparents and what it said was homemaker. Well, this was the first light bulb that popped up into their minds and they understood that they had to do something about this bias or the stereotype that the word embeddings have. So right now, I'm going to go over the overall approach and also mindset of the authors of this paper, and we'll go through the math too. But for more explanation and even animations on the mathematical part, you can go to my Medium article that I'll link in the description below. So they took out 10 pairs of gender-specific words like he, she, her, his, a woman, man, and etc. And they calculated the difference. And after that, they calculated the PCA of the difference in different gender pairs. Okay, so what they found out was that the first component of the top three principal components was biggest of all. And as you can see, it is bigger than the other two by a large margin. So they thought that if there is a difference between two genders, it has to be alongside this direction. 
So let's say that this direction shows the difference in genders, or as we can say, gender bias, with he at one end and she at the other. And let's say that the y-axis shows the neutrality of words. So we have gender neutral words in the top half and gender specific words in the lower half of the screen. The first step is neutralizing. So for that, we say like we have two gender neutral words like doctor and nurse. But as you can see, because of the bias, doctor is on the right side and closer to the he and nurse is on the left side, closer to the word she. What we do now is that we don't want this direction in either words. So we take this direction out and simply say that these words don't have any values related to this axis. And for the second part, let's say that we have two words, male and female, and a word uh, like nanny that is a gender neutral word. Here the word female is closer to nanny than male is. And this is a problem for us. And what we do here is that we want these two words to be equidistant to the word nanny. So for that we can just simply change their embeddings a little bit and equalize their distance to this word. So right now we have all the gender neutral words without any bias direction in them and also we have all the gender specific word sets equidistant to the gender neutral words. So yeah, that was it. I hope you really enjoyed this video. I tried really hard to make this one but I hope it was helpful even to one or two audience. But in general, thank you for watching and make sure to hit that like and subscribe button because it really motivates me to make more videos. And also, I love to hear from you guys, hear about your own journey and also uh, tell me about anything that you like. Just leave in the comments down below or connect me at my Twitter, LinkedIn or uh, Telegram account.